Next, we have statements by members. The member for Timmins. Well, Mr. Speaker, I have to say that uh, parents uh, and family in all of our ridings, but I'll speak specifically of Timmins, are very worried and very upset with this government in regards to the decision of what they're going to do with autism. Yeah. We have a situation where, yes, the Liberals have messed it up. We can all agree on both sides of the House that they did a poor job of managing how we provide services, IBI and ABA, uh, to kids who need that type of treatment in order to deal with the autism. But what this government has essentially done is said, we'll deal with the list by kicking everybody off the list. So now we have a situation where you had some families who their children were getting IBI therapy. We all have a number of them in our ridings, and those parents and those children are beside themselves because they're about to lose that on April the 1st. So the government's solution to fixing the waiting list problem with autism, children who need autistic, autism services, is to kick everybody off the list and, and have no list. And, get them nothing. and so I say to the government across the way, you've got this wrong. Parents in our ridings across this, on, this province, just as in your ridings, are not going to have enough money to pay for the type of services their children need based on your new program. I say go back to the drawing board, let's figure out how we fix this so that kids at the end are getting the services they need and we don't leave those children behind. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Whitby. Speaker, I stand today to pay tribute to my friend and fellow Rotarian, Blair Buchanan. Blair was honoured recently speaker by the Ontario Real Estate Association with the Ontario Realtors Care Foundation Spirit Award. The Spirit Award speaker recognizes individuals who have, in some significant way, contributed to the goals of the Ontario Realtors Care Foundation. Blair was chosen from among all realtors in the province as the one most deserving of recognition for his volunteer work in the community. Over the many years of our friendship, Blair has been an exceptional Rotarian and humanitarian. He and his family give countless volunteer hours to support organizations in my riding, including the Muslim Welfare Center, Winreach Farm, and St. Vincent's Kitchen, among others. Speaker, I'm proud to call Blair Buchanan a friend, and I'm honored to be able to pay tribute to him today and the award bestowed on him so richly deserved. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements. Member for Davenport. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today I rise to talk about the serious issue of rent evictions plaguing my riding of Davenport and so many others here in Toronto. Last week, the Toronto Star profiled the tenants of 394 Dover Court Road, longtime residents who are facing the prospect of mass eviction after a new landlord bought the property and made plans to overhaul it. Under the law, these tenants are entitled to move back into their homes when the renovations are complete, but weaknesses in that law mean that chances are they will be denied re-entry to their homes. That's because landlords know that the maximum fine for blocking their return is just $75,000, an amount that can easily be recouped and then some by jacking up the rent in the newly empty units. Loopholes like vacancy decontrol create incentives for landlords to kick out long-term tenants, like those at 394 Dover Court, some of whom have lived there for 20 years. Speaker, if we don't act now, our downtown communities risk becoming places where only the very wealthy can afford to live. But instead of trying to fix the loopholes left in place by the Liberal government, this government is tilting the scales even further from tenants. On behalf of my community of Davenport, I call on the government to step up, close the loopholes and strengthen the tenancy laws that are forcing people out of their homes and onto the streets. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Sarnia Lambton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And, uh, last spring, it was my privilege to rise in this legislature and speak briefly about a youth mental health program in my Sarnia Lambton riding called Face Off for Mental Health. Today, it's a pleasure to tell you how this program has grown into its second full season. St. Care Child and Youth launched this exciting campaign with the aim of raising awareness of mental health through local hockey associations. The goal of the program is to make hockey arenas and dressing rooms a safe place to talk about mental health. Each of these associations has hosted a face-off 
for Mental Health Awareness Weekend, where teams from Mike to Midget tape their sticks green in support of mental health. Information about the local mental health resources were made available, plus coaching staff participated in mental health education workshops. During this past year, Mr. Speaker, local support for the program grew tremendously, with Junior A Sarnia Sting and the Junior B Sarnia Legionnaires holding special nights to help raise awareness of mental health issues. It's estimated that one in five children in Ontario experience a mental health problem. That's why local programs like Face Off for Mental Health are so important. Today, I'd like to commend the St. Clair Child News Services for their and their partners for introducing this great program in Sarnia Land. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member statements, the member for Toronto Danforth. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, my constituent, Ms. Nell Toussaint, is with us this afternoon. Nell was an irregular migrant to Canada, living in Ontario, who several years ago required essential medical treatment, which she did not receive. As a consequence of that failure to provide essential health care, Ms. Toussaint is now blind, has had a leg amputation, suffered kidney failure, a heart attack, and a stroke. Had she received timely and appropriate health care, there was reasonable expectation that she would have been able to resume work, enjoy increased mobility, and be free of severe pain. Ms. Toussaint was excluded from the interim federal health program and could not get the essential health care she needed here in Ontario. The United Nations Human Rights Committee reviewed Canada's actions and stated in its decision that Canada had violated the international covenant on civil and political rights, which it is part of. Canada must act to prevent similar violations in the future, including reviewing its national legislation to ensure that irregular migrants have access to essential health care to prevent a reasonably foreseeable risk that can result in loss of life. Here in Ontario, we need to ensure that primary care and hospital-based care are available, and that the Health Insurance Act is amended to allow for OHIP coverage for irregular migrants who need essential health care so we can avoid such desperate outcomes for those living in Ontario who, through no fault of their own, face severe medical crises on our soil. Thank you, Speaker. Member Statements. The member for Don Valley West. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, this Friday, March 8th, is International Women's Day, and the theme this year is Balance for Better Society, Forging a More Gender-Balanced World. And Women's Day has been marked uh, in, in uh, Canada since 1909 and adopted in 19, 1975 by the United Nations to be celebrated internationally. I will hold an event to celebrate IWD in Don Valley West. Uh, Mr. Speaker, it's always a lively event, and I'm sure many members will do the same. At all of those events, there will be many fine words said about the progress that we have made as a society, and it's true. There have been many advances since 1909 when women in this country did not even have the right to vote. But there is so much more to do. The rates of sexual assault of women in Ontario are still unacceptable. There are too few women in boardrooms uh, across the nation, and women still still earn 74 cents for every dollar that men earn. And it's exactly because of those facts, Mr. Speaker, that our government increased the minimum wage to $14 and would have raised it to $15. We changed labour laws so that uh, everyone would have sick days, paid sick days for all workers, and, addre and we, addressed, we began to address precarious work. We commissioned a consultation on, gen on the gender wage strategy. Mr. Speaker, on Friday, when those fine words are said in writings across the province, I just want us all to remember that actions speak louder than words. And all of those things I talked about have been repealed by the previous by the current government, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Niagara West. Thank you, Speaker. I'm excited. I'm excited to be able to rise in the House today and thank the Ministry of Education for approving land funding for a new high school in my riding of Niagara West. The Ministry of Education has worked closely with the District School Board of Niagara and local municipalities to ensure the project meets the needs of families and students. Once completed, the West Niagara High School, located in Beansville, will create space for 1,533 pupils and will serve the communities of Grimsby, Lincoln and Smithville. 
Speaker, supporting our growing communities with these essential investments is key to ensuring the future of students in West Niagara. It is encouraging to know that we have a government that recognizes the value of reliable and quality education, and I'm happy to see their commitment to providing first-rate learning environments to students in Niagara and across Ontario. I know this investment will also support the community of West Niagara, serving as more than a school, but also as a gathering place for families for generations to come. On behalf of my constituents, thank you to everyone who has played a part in making this happen. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Hamilton Mountain. Thank you, Speaker. Friday is International Women's Day, a day to honour the accomplishments of women and to remind ourselves the fight for equality is not yet over. We should be reminded today about challenges women still face in the workplace and at home. In February, the Conservative government announced disastrous changes to the Ontario Autism Program, changes that have brought parents out into the streets in protest. But one often looked element is the mental anguish felt by parents who have to protest again and again just to get their children the support they need. The mental health burden, the stress, the anxiety, the fear for their child's future often falls on mothers. I have received many letters, emails and calls from women who are scared for their child's future and angry with this government. I have even received messages from women scared for their own future. That's because they are physically burnt out and financially strained. Raising a child with special needs is not easy, and these courageous women fight to make sure their children get the right support. But sometimes dark clouds form. I have heard from courageous women who are battling depression and even suicidal thinking. One mother shared with me that she looked up whether her life insurance covers suicide. She wanted me to let everyone here know how autism changes affect parents too. She tells me she's not the only parent with dark thoughts lately. The mental anguish caused by the government's changes to the Ontario Autism Program disproportionately affects women. On this International Women's Day, I want to recognize the courageous sisters, mothers, aunts, grandmothers and friends that have to bear the mental stress. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Richmond Hill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This weekend, I had the privilege of attending the 14th anniversary annual gala of the Yellow Brick House, which empowers women and children of domestic abuse to rebuild their lives. Since 1978, Yellow Brick House has been providing emergency shelter transitional housing and a wide range of counseling services for victims. This year's gala, Break the Silence, included a drum cafe, a high energy interactive experience where the audience played drums along with the performers, reminding us it is time to break the silence. It was a fundraising event, but I, was, I have never seen audience so engaged and involved. Everyone want to overbid the other that at the at the live auction. I was very encouraged by the story of the guest speaker Ebeth Ramos Ayala, who is the CEO and president of Innovation. Ebeth briefly shared her personal story of how Yellow Brick House helped her to rebuild her life. Ebeth now give back to a big way to support them financially and with the time and talent. Mr. Speaker, Yellow Brick House will continue to help raise awareness, change attitude and behaviours, and achieve real progress for women and children. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Scarborough Agent Court. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Families in Scarborough Agent Court will finally be able to count on a fair and transparent police oversight process that will always put public safety first. The Comprehensive Ontario Police Services Act 2019 will finally fix the previous government's Bill 175, which treated police with suspicion that record of failure allowed for the dramatic increase in violent crimes in my riding of Scarborough Agent Court. Recently, 
In my community, a number of Chinese businesses were robbed by criminals, such as Magic Noodle, Kennedy's Noodle, and Portman Hot Pot, forcing many of the businesses to shut down temporarily. This is truly unacceptable. Law-abiding businesses, owners, and employees should be able to operate without fear. Mr. Speaker, we believe that ensuring the security of the people is government's most fundamental responsibility. Here, here. This act will help in bridging the division to make Ontario safer. To support our local community, my colleague Vincent Ke and I attended crime prevention information se session organized by the Chinese Cultural Center of Toronto and 42nd Division in my riding. It, become, uh, it became very clear that action was needed to ensure that police, community members, and government are working together to ensure safety and security of everyone. During my visit with affected establishment, I heard that more work needs to be done to ensure that the partnership between the community and police is enhanced. Finally, Mr. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Reports by committees. I beg to inform.